Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now go into, you know, a couple of years ago in history and share with you what happened on this day, the 11th of June. I'm starting with the year 1955, and this is on record uh, the one of the worst sporting disasters ever, one of the worst racing disasters yeah. ever, um, where, of course, uh, about 80 lives were lost on this day in 1955 wow. after two race cars crashed into, the, you know, into each other and, of course, uh, broke down into numerous pieces. Um, 80 people died, um, wow. about 83 people, I beg your pardon, died, and about 180 were injured, including uh, one of the race car drivers. It also led to the uh, pausing of Mercedes from uh, participating in F1. They eventually came back in 1984. Um, um, most of the casualties, most of the, of the deaths, uh, occurred, you know, from the breakdown of the car parts you know, that spread into the, you know, the stand where the spectators were uh, seated watching the race. It's called the 1955 Le Mans disaster, and it was a major crash that occurred on this day during the 24 hours of Le Mans motor race at, uh, um, in uh, France. A large pieces of debris flew into the crowd, killing 83 spectators and the French driver, uh, Pierre Bolini, who raced, um, of course, um, for Mercedes at that time. Um, it also injured about 180 people. It is on record the most catastrophic crash in motorsport history, and it prompted Mercedes-Benz at that time to retire, like I said, uh, from motor racing until 1987. Uh, there was, of course, a lot of debate over who, you know, was to blame. But at that time, the, both cars were moving as uh, fast as 200 kilometers per hour, about 125 miles per hour, and made uh, uh, contact with each other that caused the crash. The official uh, inquiry held none of the drivers specifically responsible and criticized instead the layout of the 30-year-old track, which had uh, not been designed for cars on that speed. Um, a mass, of course, a special mass was held in the morning of the Le Mans Cathedral uh, for the funeral of the victims. And, you know, eventually, of course, the F1 and motorsports in general, as a result of this crash, now uh, knew that they needed to do more with regards to safety for spectators and safety for drivers uh, um, of, um, uh, in motorsports. So generally, a lot of changes needed to be made. Uh, the stands and the space between the drivers and the stands, of course, had to be had to be extended. Um, uh, I, th I think at that time they also didn't have some of all those barriers on the you know on the sides of the track that they currently have now, yeah. um, and some of all all those things. So, um, sadly, of course, you know this number of people had to die for some of those changes to be made. Uh, but on this day, that's when, of course, that disaster happened. My my, just it was just such a. Sad, sad day in history, you know, mm. this day, the 11th of June, and then that special mass held, you know, in that Catholic church for the first funerals um, for the victims. I, I feel very bad when we have to talk about sad news regarding deaths on today in history. It's just so terrible. 80 people. You know what it, it means for, and it, it really just creates a picture, an image in your head of how fast these cars actually move. To be running at 200 kilometers per hour mm -hmm. um, on a track is insane speed. Um, and so any, and, that, and that's you know, one of the most delicate parts of you know, these uh, sports. Anything that happens at that time, any mistake that, hap you know, that happens, of course, at that time, puts you between life and death. You know, and that, of course, includes drivers, includes the um, assistants, includes the tech, uh, technical team, includes also spectators. Um, people who came that day to enjoy a good um, a motorsport race didn't get back home. You know, a lot of them, of course, died and many all, others, about 180 or, um, others, um, ended up in hospital, you know, to, because of various degrees of injury. So, whew, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Mm. But let's look for something uh, happier yes, story Yes, something time. better, something, something way, way lighter. It's still in sports. On this day in history, the 11th of June uh, 2010, um, the first Africa FIFA World Cup kicked off in South Africa. Uh, South African President Jacob Zuma officially opened the 2010 World Cup. And uh, 
it opened with a ceremony, a very colorful ceremony in the Soccer City Stadium in South Africa. That stadium had just been renovated ahead of the World Cup. It was just such a beautiful day in South African history. We saw, you know, that, that picture, you just saw that man uh, with the Vovuzela. The Vovuzela became very popular um, after that South African uh, event with the World Cup because people were, look at that picture there, people were just enjoying themselves with the Vuvuzela, the beautiful, colorful uh, face paintings, the colorful dressing of the South Africans. You know, um, there were other notable fans like, like Nobel Laureate Desmond Tutu. He was one of the spectators at that event. The stadium was just buzzing with life. There were about 90,000 uh, people who, who actually was at that event right there, the 11th of June, 2010. And, um, we also know that in a total of 10 arenas, 64 World Cup games were played. And, um, you know, according to the soccer governing body FIFA, 97% of the 2.88 million tickets were sold. But many locals could not afford the, the, you know, to buy tickets. They were really expensive. So they watched this ticket, they watched the game uh, from their homes, not necessarily live. Too, too expensive to afford, but it was just such a such a very notable event in South Africa. It featured hundreds of dancers. South Africa's legendary trumpeter was there. American R&B star Ara Kelly, you know, there were military plane fly passes over the stadium. It was just such a remarkable event in South Africa. Very colorful ceremony there. And that, um, that's from the also, 11th of June to the 11th of July, 2010. Uh, that's also, you know, the time that the uh, Vuvuzelas became very, very uh, popular. It, it, I, it, I think they were one of the most colorful, you know, aspects of the whole uh, uh, World Cup um, at that time. Yes, you know, Masakela, you Masakela, the to, legendary um, South African trumpeter. trumpeter. Yeah. They used to blow the, the vuvuzelas, and even in Nigeria, some people on their way back from South Africa bought some of the, brought some of those vuvuzelas um, um, as part of, you know, you know, souvenirs from South Africa. It also, of course, there was a time that. Um, there was huge and huge, you know, tourism into you know, South Africa in that period, um, and um, basically just shown, you know, or, you know uh, put a spotlight on what South Africa was able to achieve in that time. But you can also also have this conversation without talking about the influence of Nelson Mandela in getting that World Cup to um, South Africa. About four or six started. years ago, yeah. when they ha held the bid for yeah. for that. Um, eventually, Spain, of course, won the World Cup, um, and. If you ask yourself, this happened in 2010, Ten. we're in 2021. Can Nigeria host the World Cup? Are you, are you talking about the World Cup? What's the, what's the name of that other match that was eventually cancelled? Mm -hmm. I was supposed to hold in Lagos. What, what's the name? <laughs> we think we're having to, well, it's cost, <laughs> to discuss sports. It so basically, I think it just shows how much sports can unify, yes. b bring people together, serve as an avenue for tourism. Yes. You know how much South Africa made during that period yes, with absolutely. all the people who flew into the country, you know, tourism. It just opened up the country in so many ways. I think. Well, be beautiful world. Yes, yeah, I think we I should be it. focusing on that, not have situation where the government promises to give you money for your Edo festival and then they tell you there's no money and yeah. your people are using boats. It's just, it, it can be very embarrassing in this part of the world. But anyway, um, good news today, 2010, June 11th, uh, the World Cup in South Africa opened. And of course, a little sad for me, 1955, the Le Mans disaster in France, uh, the 83 people died in a motorsport disaster. Stay with us. We'll be back after this short break and we're moving straight into our first major conversation for yes. today. And that is in Oshun State, uh, where, of course, the government is giving identity cards to headers as a way of uh, curbing the insecurity challenges uh, the state is facing. We'll talk about it after this break.